Welcome to dealing with materials data. This is a course on the collection, analysis and interpretation of data from material science and engineering. We are in module 6 which is on case studies and the first case study that we are going to take up is on data smoothing. Um, mechanical properties are very commonly tested and measured because for many materials these are important. And universal testing machine UTM is the machine that is typically used to get some of these mechanical properties. And in these machines we impose a load and measure the displacement and from these we get the stress and strain. And uh, a typical experiment uh, is uh, consists of uh, tensile stresses and the corresponding strains. And then you can determine a whole bunch of uh, mechanical properties, elastic modulus or stiffness of the material, strength which is the yield strength or ultimate tensile strength or 0.2 percent proof stress. So, there are lots of uh, measures for knowing the strength of the material. Resilience which is the area under the curve in the elastic region and ductility which is the strain that you get when the material fails and toughness which is the area under the stress strain curve. So, all this you can get and in most of the machines after test there will be a computer that is attached to the machine which also collects the data and the data will be analyzed and the machine will give you the modular strength etc. But uh, in this exercise just to have better understanding of what goes on in calculating these measures and also to appreciate some of the nuances involved in getting it automatically in like that in a machine, uh, we are going to do this uh, by ourselves, we are going to do this by hand. And I want to show a typical uh, data that uh, you will see for uh, stress strain. Uh, for example, here you see that uh, the this is for aluminum and uh, this is stress and uh, strain. And uh, you see that even though it is a tensile test, uh, stress is shown as negative value. And what is more, there is some stress, but the strain is still shown to be 0. So, for um, at the beginning of the test before things settle down and uh, so, so here is the first time you will see a non-zero uh, strain. Uh, on the other hand when you have stress to be non-zero you would expect the strain to be non-zero but the, at least the machine is not able to uh, measure these quantities or it thinks it is zero or it is measuring it as um, wrongly as zero. So, in any case so this is the kind of data we have. And on top of it after this also uh, there are uh, there are so, so you have several uh, stress values and uh, the strain remains constant uh, maybe because it is not able to distinguish be between the different strains uh, for example 30.56 uh, in fact 29.66 and 35.92 they all show 0 0.6 0 0.06. Uh, but probably there is some change in the third decimal place the machine is not able to measure that um, and, and so on and so forth. And you will also see when we plot that the data is a little bit noisy. Uh, so, we will uh, do this uh, plotting and see. So, the summary version of what we have seen <coughs> is that the raw data is noisy. And so, it needs a smoothing that is to remove noise and retain only the data which we are going to do. There are also things like negative stress and uh, stress with zero strain and so on and so forth. So, this data needs a clean up. How to clean up the data and smooth the data to carry out further analysis is what we are going to do in this case study. And we are going to use data sets from stress strain experiment on both aluminum and brass. And uh, I will do the exercise for aluminum and uh, I will leave the brass data set with you so that you can do same things and see how it works. So, our task is to clean and smooth the data, calculate the modulus and a measure of strength. So, we want to get and uh, smoothing also leads to machine learning and Erizari's book on data science has uh, this aspect described in detail. Uh, in fact, I strongly recommend that uh, you peruse this book. Um, like we mentioned long back, it is a book that is uh, freely available and you can see that there is a chapter 29 on smoothing and uh, it comes in the part on machine learning. So, smoothing is a technique and it is called curve fitting or low pass filtering 
and it is very useful. And uh, as you see here, so there is a data which has a smooth uh, trend and there is noise and when you add them up uh, instead of looking like this, uh, the data looks like this. So our aim is to separate out this part and remove it and so get the data back to uh, this kind of uh, uh, curve so that we can do the analysis on that. Okay. So there are several different ways of doing it and we will do one manually ourselves and then we will use some of the commands that is given in this book. But in any case I strongly recommend that you go through Rizari's book and uh, so it has more information than what we are going to discuss uh, which might come handy for you when you do uh, smoothing of your own data. So let us uh, go back uh, to uh, our data and uh, uh, let us begin with uh, plotting the data. So let us open R and let us do the uh, reading of data and plotting it. Okay, so we have read the data, aluminum tensile data, it is in a CSV format. So we use ggplot and we plot stress versus strain and we collect the points through a line and we have labeled it as aluminum stress strain curve. Um, now you can see that the data at least here for example shows some kind of noisy behavior and there is some noise here also. And even in this initial part there is some noise, but we are not able to see it clearly because you know when we draw schematic stress strain curves we draw a linear portion and then show the deviation from linearity. But that linear portion is exaggerated to show clearly how it looks. But in most of the materials that portion is very small, elastic strains are very, very small compared to the total strain. So this is a very small portion of the curve. So we need to basically uh, zoom on this part and show it as an inset to see how this part looks from where we are going to get the modulus. So to do that, uh, let us do the next exercise. Okay. So here it is seen better, so there is noise. Um, and uh, here you cannot very clearly see but there is a little bit of noise here too. So to do this we are going to do this uh, um, exercise. Okay. So, <clears throat> we are going to use the library table and uh, we are going to use uh, library GGP miscellaneous. And so, we are going to define the main plot which is the same uh, stress strain curve and uh, we have the data. So, uh, we, are, we are going to plot the strain stress um, in, in the data. Then we are going to prepare uh, inset and the inset gives you the limits for the x and y axis. And from the main plot, it is going to take this portion of the curve and it is going to prepare an inset. And then we are going to of course plot them together, main plot and with the inset. So that is what this command does. So as you can see, so you can see that there is this main curve and we have taken a small portion from here and we have expanded. And if you zoom in, you can see that what looks like a neat straight line here actually also has lots of uh, these uh, wiggles. So what we need is actually a smooth curve. Okay? And you can see that the initial portion uh, still has some problems uh, because uh, maybe um, the, the stress strain measurements are not really perfect here. So this looks like a straight line. So if you extend it slightly, uh, it, it should go something like this, but it, it has a different slope. And this is a common problem initial um, when you put the uh, sample in and put the grips on and try to do the experiment initially maybe there are uh, small adjustments that has to take place before uh, proper loading happens and your measurements of uh, load and displacement are reliable. So, so this is the um, 
So, we need the cleanup part we have seen in the data itself it, that it requires cleaning up. We also now see that there is a need for smoothing of the data. So, the exercise now is to do both <coughs> the cleanup and smoothing. So, to do that, okay, so let us uh, take this. Um, Okay. So, we need to read the data and then uh, this gives you the uh, length of the data that is how many data points are there and then we are going to go through each of the data points and then what we are going to do. Um, we are going to say that if the strain is 0, uh, we are going to keep track of what is the stress. Okay? So, once you go through all data points, uh, so you will see beginning at the beginning where it measures strain to be 0 even though the stress is not 0, you will know what is that stress value and because it keeps rewriting to the same value, you will know what is the highest stress value for which the strain is marked as 0. So, that value will be stored as B for us and then we are going to take the uh, data and whatever values which are greater than 0 in terms of stress and strain, those are the only things that we are going to consider and we are also going to remove this. Uh, um, so, so, we are going to offset the stress in such a way that uh, it uh, starts at values when when the stress is non zero the strain will also be non zero okay so the the previous stress value which shows some value so we are going to subtract it out so that it starts at 0 0 okay so so that is what is being done here and let's do this Okay. So, you can see that uh, B is uh, 3.37 and uh, from the data also we see that 3.37 is the value at which it still shows 0. So, if you subtract 3.37 from all the uh, stress you will see that it is 0, 0 and then 0 0.01, 0 0.01 and so on and so forth. So, so we are going to use this. And, and you can see where the noise comes from. So, 3.38 and again it becomes 3.37. So, it will give you as 0 0.01, 0 0.01 and 0 and 0 0.01. So, this is the small wiggly thing that you see in the plot. So, so this part uh, of uh, the, the, the data, now if you uh, let us say head uh, x, okay. so you can see that it, it gives you only uh, positive and uh, non-zero stress and whenever the stress is uh, um, non-zero you also see that uh, the strain is uh, non-zero okay? uh, even though there is a small noise because here it is 0 so it should be 0 but you, you do see some uh, noise there. So, this is the data now we have using this data now we are going to do the analysis. So, the first thing to do is to uh, take out the linear portion of the curve and fit it to a straight line and from the slope of the curve we can evaluate the 
uh, modulus right. So, that is the first exercise we want to do. So, let us uh, do that exercise. Uh, so, how do we do that and here is a code um, which does the smoothing first ok. So, let us let us complete the smoothing first. Okay, so, now because we have uh, edited a data a little bit and removed the portions where we had uh, some, uh, some uh, clean up and, uh, um, and, and negative stress and things like that. So, we have removed them. So, we have to get the new uh, size of the data. So, that is what A is and then we are going to use this uh, uh, M to be 25 that is this is the size of the box that we are going to use to uh, do the uh, smoothing. And uh, this can be different. So, you can actually play around with it and find out what is the uh, right number which gives you a smoother data. And the smoother data we are going to store in the variable x. So, it is a data frame and it has uh, so many data points and, uh, and then it has two columns. So, stress and strain which are smoothened values which are going to be stored here. And the index is a sequence. So, it starts from 25 and it goes up to the length minus 25 and it increases in 1. And what we are going to do as you can see here is that we are going to take every data point and we are going to take 25 data points before and 25 data points after and we are going to average the uh, data points for stress and strain over these uh, um, data points that we have chosen and the averaged out value we are going to store as the stress and strain at that point right. So, suppose if I take i, so index it starts with 25, so 25th point that I will take, then I will take 24 points before that and 24 points after that including the 25th point. So, now you have uh, 49 points. So, that is why it is 2 into m minus 1. So, we have averaged this 49 points stress and divide by that and we are storing it as the stress at that point right which is the 25th data point in the original data set the cleaned up data set. And so, we are going to then plot this uh, stress and uh, uh, strain uh, that we get um, from this uh, smoothened data and uh, then we are also going to see the um, linear portion uh, of the of the curve. So, let us first uh, plot the um, let us first plot the uh, uh, curve smoothen and plot the curve. So, you can now clearly see that the data is very nicely smoothened ok and now you can look at only uh, this portion of the curve. Uh, which is where I am, I am restricting the x limit to, to go from 0 to 0 0.2 right. So, this is 2.5. So, we are we are restricting ourselves to very small region and you can see that it is a straight line. So, you can also do a little bit maybe 0.5 or something. So, you can see that this is the uh, this is why I am plotting up to 0.2 because if you plot up to 0.5 you can see that the uh, curve um, changes. So, you can for example, let us see the full curve. So, this is the curve right. So, up to 2 if you plot this is the curve. So, up to 0 0.5 if you plot you see this part and from that curve you know that somewhere around 0 0.2, 0 0.25 is where the change is. And if you plot for the smaller region, uh, you can also see that there is this uh, small portion. So, this is the curve and if it is extended it should go like that. Uh, but the curve goes like this. So, there is some small error here and so if you leave this out the remaining portion is actually the straight line uh, response which is the linear response ok from which <laughs> one can calculate the uh, modulus. So, let us uh, do the modulus calculation ok. Um, so, to do that Okay, so, we are going to take uh, first 200 points and uh, take the strain and stress and we are going to plot it 
and we are also going to fit it uh, for a straight line and we are going to uh, plot the uh, fitted line in, in, in red. Okay. So, you can see that these are the data points and these are the uh, this is the fitted line and obviously there is some uh, small region here which is uh, to be discarded and the rest of the data actually fits very nicely for the straight line. And so, if you look at the fit um, summary, uh, you find that uh, the uh, slope is uh, uh, 658.57 and uh, if you look at uh, original data then uh, um, you, you, you realize that the, um, the stress was given in MPA. So, uh, if you look at the value of uh, 658 uh, MPA, so that is uh, um, So, it should give you the uh, modulus in GPA. Okay. So, so you can fit the straight line and you can uh, get the um, modulus value and of course, you can also check your um, fitting by plotting the residuals. So, you can plot the residuals and see and of course, the residuals are not looking um, like randomly distributed. So, there seems to be some methodical errors and you can also do the QQ norm to check if the error is uh, random. Uh, it, it does not seem to be, it is really not a straight line. So, there seems to be some um, deviation from uh, linearity. In any case, so, so we have the data and we can also calculate the other quantities. For example, um, so the modulus is nothing but the uh, slope that we have calculated and UTS value is basically the maximum in the stress. So, you can calculate the modulus so 658, so that is 65.8 GPA and UTS is uh, 196 uh, MPA. Okay. Uh, so, so, you can see that we have got uh, um, values and if you look at the stress strain curve that we plotted uh, some time back, um, you will see that, so it is about UTS is about uh, 200 and, uh, and we can go and look at the plots. and you can see that the UTS is about 200 and the slope of this initial portion of the curve um, happens to be um, 658. Um, so, that is uh, uh, 65.8 uh, GPM. Okay. So, you can uh, carry out uh, further analysis. Okay. Uh, what is the other analysis. So, let us uh, do one more thing. Um, okay. So, what we are trying to do now is that okay, we are going to plot the uh, stress versus strain and uh, we are going to uh, draw a line uh, which with the coefficient, so which will be in red. So, you will uh, see the stress strain curve with a line uh, drawn, right. So, let us do that, let us remove this uh, plot so that we will not be distracted by it. And then what we are going to do, uh, we are going to calculate uh, the um, x, what is the length of it and then we are going to take the data points in fives 
and uh, we are going to calculate the slope and store it in the variable called slope. So, we are going to take the full data and uh, we are going to slide uh, a box of uh, length uh, 5 and a bin of length 5 and using this uh, we are going to calculate the slope and that is that is what this portion of the curve does and uh, so it is going to store in a data frame called slope the strain stress and the slope at the given uh, strain value and, and, and the given stress value. So, that is what this quantity is calculating and so this is calculating using uh, uh, I mean just a simple difference. So, you take the ith point plus m and minus m you take the difference and uh, divide by the um, the 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 strain so it is uh, dy by dx and that i am calling as uh, slope okay so let's uh, do this uh, exercise okay so you can see that uh, this is the stress strain get data which is smoothened and uh, this is the line that we have fit so one measure of uh, the strength you can already see the deviation from yield strength happens uh, somewhere around 130 that you can see very clearly uh, and so you can say that yield strength is 130 we have already calculated uts uh, that is somewhere around 196 or something and uh, from this uh, plot itself you can make out that uh, this is where the slope change happens but uh, you can also do this uh, using our uh, other calculation that we have done in terms of slope and let us do that to know what happens. Okay. So, let us plot the slope and also list out the first 70 values to know how it looks. Okay. So, you can see that initially there is some error and then there is a constant value and then there is a slope change and then it becomes another constant value here. So, from the stress strain curve it is clear uh, what these uh, values correspond to um, because if you look at it, so there is some initial problem and then there is a constant value more or less and then there is a change and once uh, the change takes place and this portion again you can consider as sort of linear and so it will show you, uh, this is a much steeper curve, it's, it will show you a much smaller but uh, constant uh, uh, slope. And that is what is being shown. So, there is initial some transients and then there is some constant value and then there is a changeover and then there is becoming. So, somewhere around uh, 0.35 or 0.4 is where this other slope is coming in. So, this is the transition region and we know that the uh, linear limit is somewhere till 0.12 or something. And then there is a changeover and here you can see about 0.4 you get the, um, the, the change to slope. So, it becomes plastic. Now, here in this, uh, in this data now you can see the slope is uh, for at different strains it is plotted and you can see that so there is initial transient 327, 290, 203, 158 etcetera and then it reaches a sort of constant value here we know that it should hover around 680 and uh, that is what it is uh, doing. And after that of course, there is a change that happens and uh, somewhere around uh, 0.3 right, is where this becomes sort of straight line 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 you can see 0 0.3 to 0 0.4. Uh, the, the value changes and about uh, uh, 0.34, 0.36, 0.38, 0.39, 0.4. So, it becomes sort of constant value here. And you can see that th at that point where the ch uh, slope change has happened, uh, the value of stress is 132, which is what we also saw from the plot that uh, the, uh, the value, the, the yield stress is uh, this. Of course, there is one more way to calculate the yield stress uh, which is to uh, look at the um, take a line which is uh, parallel to this line but uh, starts from 0.2 percent and then wherever it intersects with this curve is also the 0.2 percent proof stress but we are going to leave that as an exercise for you to do. So, this script now shows how to take the data, how to clean up the data, how to smoothen the data. 
And once you have smoothened the data, you can do fitting and which is also something that we have learned. And from the fitting parameters, you can evaluate the quantities and you also know the error now in the fitting parameters using which you will also be able to tell uh, to what extent uh, is your uh, um, parameter that you are estimating, namely in this case the modulus, uh, what is the error in the modulus estimation that also you will get uh, from the fitting exercise. And then you can do other things uh, like uh, measuring the UTS and uh, measuring the deviation from uh, linearity which indicates the onset of plasticity and so on and so forth. So we will also leave the brass uh, tensile uh, data. Uh, the biggest challenge that one faces is that, uh, um, let us take a look at this. So you can uh, load it, plot it, you can zoom in on the elastic part and uh, you can clean up smooth and you can pick each data point and average and that is how smoothing is done. And you can take the linear part, fit a straight line and get the slope, so that is the modulus. You can check the fit by plotting the data and fit and residuals, QQ, etc. You can find the yield stress, you can get UTS. But how do you automate it so that you know if I give some other different code uh, the data, the same code will work and give me the values. Now that is challenging because we have used some values like for averaging we used a bin size of 25 to smooth and uh, for getting the slope we used a bin size of 5. Uh, now how do I do all these things in an automated fashion so that the value comes to me directly? Uh, that is a harder problem, but the one that I will leave you to um, uh, play with uh, and, and we will put both the data sets so that you can reproduce the results that I have shown as well as do it on um, uh, bras for yourselves. Thank you.